In this video, we are looking at circles. A circle is simply the set of points that is a fixed distance away from a centre. So what I'm saying is the distance from the centre to here is the same as the distance from the centre to here and from the centre to here, from here to here, and so on in every direction. Now, there are several key words that we need to know about when it comes to circles. One of the most important key words when it comes to circles is radius. A radius is simply a line that joins the centre of the circle to the edge. So this is a radius for this circle. It's not the only possible radius. I could have drawn this line in any direction, from the centre to the edge, like this. And any of those lines would have been a radius. Now, when we say radius, we could be talking about such a line, but also we could be talking about the length of that line. So, for example, in this circle, the radius might be five centimetres. So it depends on context. If someone were to ask you for the radius of this circle, they probably mean the length of the radius, in which case you would say five centimetres. If somebody said to draw a radius on this circle, you've got lots of possible choices. You could have drawn one in this direction, but you could have drawn one in absolutely any direction, as long as it went from the centre to the edge. The second key word we're going to look at is diameter. A diameter is a straight line going from the edge of the circle through the centre to the edge again. Like with the radius, the diameter can go in any direction. I could have started up here, gone through the centre and finished down here and got a diameter like that, for example. And just like with the radius, when we talk about diameter, we might be talking about a diameter, so that's any such line in any direction, or we could be talking about the length of that line. Hopefully you can see that the diameter is twice the radius because it consists of a radius and another radius put end to end. So before, if we said the radius was five centimetres, the diameter would be 10 centimetres. It is double the radius. The third key word we're looking at is circumference. Now, the circumference of a circle is simply the distance all the way around it. You might already know a word for this. It's basically the perimeter of a circle. It's got a special name in the case of a circle, but it's simply the distance all the way around it. Just like with radius and diameter, however, when someone says circumference, they could actually mean two things. We've already talked about one being basically the perimeter, the distance all the way around the circle, but they could also just mean this curved edge of the circle itself. So they might say the radius is simply the distance from the centre to the circumference. You might have already come across a formula that tells you how to work out the circumference if you know the diameter. It's simply pi times the diameter. If you haven't come across that before, we will cover that in full in lesson G17b. On to the next keywords. Imagine slicing the circle so that each slice goes to the centre of the circle. What we've done is effectively draw on a radius and another radius, so two radii. And by doing this, we've actually split the circle into two parts. And these parts have a name. This is called a sector. And this is also called a sector. So a sector is what you obtain when you slice a circle to the centre. This sector here is called a minor sector because it's the smaller one. And this one here is called a major sector. Now, by slicing the circle in this way, we haven't just split its area into two sectors. We've also split its circumference. We've got part of the circumference from here round to here. And that part has a name. It's called an arc. It is just part of the circumference of a circle. And we can work out the length of this arc, which we'll cover in a later lesson. And we've also got another arc. This part all the way around here is also an arc. And just like we call this the minor sector and this one the major sector, this red one would be the minor arc and this blue one would be the major arc. And as I've said, an arc is simply part of the circumference. So even this major arc is only part of the circumference. It's not a full circle. 
Next, we've got a chord. A chord is simply a straight line segment joining two points on the circumference of a circle. Now, that sounds very familiar. It sounds like a diameter. That's also a straight line segment that joins two points on the circumference of a circle. So, can you think about what the difference is between the diameter and the chord? Hopefully, you remember that a diameter has to go through the centre of the circle. So yes, it does join two points on the circumference, but it must go through the centre. A chord does not have to go through the centre. So this is an example of a chord. Now, if you draw a chord on a circle, you effectively split it into two segments. Just as we saw with sectors and arcs, we've got a smaller segment and a larger segment. The smaller segment is called the minor segment, and the larger segment is called the major segment. Finally, we have the tangent. Now, this is not really part of a circle, but it is a key word nonetheless. A tangent is a line that touches the circle at just one point. And if we were to draw a radius, so a line from the centre to that point where the circle meets the tangent, then the angle between the radius and the tangent will be 90 degrees, like this. Now, you may have come across the word tangent when looking at graphs, and you'll know that a tangent just touches the graph locally at one point. The same is true in this case. The tangent just touches the circle at that one point. It's not a line that goes through the circle, say here, and then through the circle again there. That would be a line going through the circle at two points. The tangent doesn't do that.